This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. Business owners in Ocean Beach remain on high alert after a string of burglaries. Police say the most recent break in happened Thursday at OB Noodle House. Investigators believe the burglar pulled off a plywood covering on broken glass to get inside that restaurant. The manager says this is the second time they've been broken into in just the past three weeks. Other restaurants on the same block say their businesses have also been targeted. Investigators say the suspect broke into the lockbox and took keys and other items. People had, you know, paychecks in that safe and they had, you know, their bank information. So that getting out there, that leads to a whole slew of other things that we have to do in order to, you know, realign and get back on our feet. If you have any information about these crimes, call San Diego Police. It is a difficult morning for San Diego Fire Rescue. The department is hoping for a speedy recovery for three firefighters who were injured in a crash while on their way to help victims of Hurricane Helene. 48 members of Search and Rescue California Task Force 8 left San Diego on Friday. A group of them crashed early Sunday morning near the border of Texas and Louisiana. San Diego Fire Rescue says one battalion chief and two captains were injured. They were airlifted to LSU Hospital. The rest of the crew members are awaiting further instruction. Yesterday, San Diego's fire chief, deputy chief, along with the victim's family members, left to be with the injured firefighters. It's obviously a very serious incident, and I ask the San Diegans keep each one of these firefighters in their prayers. These folks uh, are in service of our city, uh, helping to us to step up in a time of national need. I could not be prouder of them. While briefing the public on the response in Helene, President Biden thanked all of the first responders, including our local firefighters who were hurt. One of the brave teams has volunteered to be there is from San Diego County Fire Department set to travel all the way from California to North Carolina to help. But on their way, they were in a, in a terrible car accident in Louisiana. We pray for their full recovery, but it was a bad accident. Up to right now. The president also said he plans to travel to the impacted areas as soon as possible, but was told it would be a distraction to go at this time. Otay Mesa is getting a refresh on one of the main roads that runs through the community. And with that, the city says they have repaired one quarter of the entire road network since late 2020. NBC7's Nicole Gomez was on hand for the announcement. Well, we're right next to Montgomery High School here on Byer Way and neighbors, even parents of students have complained about this road for decades. And as you can see, it's finally getting fixed. This morning, city crews got to work on repaving one of the worst roads in San Diego. The two mile stretch of Byer Way in Otay Mesa was graded in poor condition with a score of 12.8 on a scale of 100. The work comes as the city says it has completed over 1600 miles of road repairs or roughly a quarter of the road network since late 2020. Still, the city says a lot more needs to be done. Remember, San Diego Street scored below the industry standard in an assessment earlier this this year, the current road score is a 63, while industry standard is 70. The city budgeted $140 million for roads this fiscal year, which they say allowed them to hire more in-house repair crews. These mill and pave crews can work quickly and effectively, and there's no need to wait to hire a contractor. Investing in house crews is an effective way to repair roads that have been previously left behind. Without these teams, we would not be able to pave this road. Well, today the city council will also be reviewing a pothole audit since more needs to be done across the city because potholes are still a big concern. Reporting in Otay Mesa, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. NBC7 meteorologist Brooke Martell joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Brooke. Happy Monday. I hope everyone enjoyed their weekend. A foggy start to the day for the coast and the valleys. For the immediate coastline today, upper 60s, but closer to those upper 70s for downtown. Mid to upper 80s for your inland valleys. Some areas, though, could be reaching the 90s, like Ramona. And we'll have a mix of upper 80s to the low 90s for the mountains. 105 for Borrego Springs. But look at this. Tomorrow, heat advisory going into effect. That'll be for the inland valleys. It'll last through Wednesday night. We'll also have an excessive heat warning for the desert region. 
Hundreds of workers from the Hilton San Diego have been on the picket lines for a month now. Today, 800 more could join them at the Hotel Dell. We'll explain. Did you know NBC7 is helping you stay up to date on your local news? Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Catherine Garcia. And I'm Mark Muller. And catch up on your favorites. Hey, there we go. All on Peacock. Watch award-winning movies. This is your moment. And the trendiest shows. Did you miss me? Welcome to the Kelly Clarkson Show. Whether you're on the go or on one at home. Pretty afternoon. We're going to be cooler than yesterday. Sign up now to stream on Peacock. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. It has been a month since 700 union employees at the Hilton San Diego Bayfront hit the picket line. And depending on what happens today, they could be joined by 800 more union workers at the Hotel Del Coronado. They are expected to vote on whether to strike as their contracts expire tonight. The strike is part of a larger negotiation going on between the country's largest hotel workers union and Hilton, which owns the Dell. Union workers want to return to pre pandemic staff to evenly spread out their workload, plus receive higher pay. The body just burns out after a while. It's, it's quite normal. Out of a 700 employees, less than 2% can afford a home. It's, it's unfair. It's unfair. A Hilton spokesperson says they are negotiating in good faith and want an agreement that's beneficial for staff and the hotels. However, according to a union spokesperson, there are no bargaining sessions scheduled for either hotel. An $87 million project has wrapped up in the North County. Sandag and Caltrans leaders just wrapped a press conference announcing the restoration project at the San Diego Lagoon is officially complete. You might have noticed when driving on the five through Del Mar, it started over a decade ago. In fact, in 2012, with a goal of turning what used to be agricultural fields into saltwater wetlands and create a new trail connecting the Dust Devil Nature Trail to El Camino Real. The new MTS Copper Trolley Line just launched in the East County, making it easier for people in these communities to get around. Service began yesterday morning. The new trolley line will replace the green and orange lines north of the El Cajon Transit Center. It is expected to save MTS about a million dollars in operating costs. As soon as January, the transit agency hopes to have every single trolley run every 15 minutes, especially as the number of transit riders has risen to nearly pre-pandemic levels. It will reduce the number of delays that we have through the entire trolley system by providing this dedicated segment right here. Um, in Santee, we have some single track areas towards the end of the line, which sometimes create a bottleneck and then it causes delays throughout the rest of the system. And today, MTS thanked East County riders for being so patient during this construction on this project. They handed out free donuts, coffee, and copper line mugs or collector's pins at the El Cajon Transit Center this morning. Verizon is experiencing a nationwide outage. It started around 6 this morning, and there's been more than 100,000 reports submitted on the company's website. Many users say their phone is displaying that SOS mode, which means the phone is not connected to a network. The company says they are aware of the issue and are working to fix it. NBC7 meteorologist Brooke Martell will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Weather coverage you count on. You count on accuracy. The winds are going to be increasing. You count on these experts. Take a look here at our future weather. In two languages. You count on innovative tech. Look at our first alert Doppler radar. From a team you depend on. Dry conditions to round out this week. You count on early warnings. The tornado warning for parts of East County. Because you know every second counts. It just kept getting worse and worse. This is first alert weather. This is coverage you count on. Only on NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Here's a look at that 10 day forecast. We are trending warmer tomorrow through Wednesday, and that will actually prompt a heat advisory for the Inland Valley communities as well. And you can see why, because those temperatures could reach the upper 90s by midweek. And Wednesday is expected to be the warmest day of the week. Even after we get through that warming spell, we could see going into the weekend, warmer temperatures still hanging around. Some 80s for your coastal communities. Inland valleys right around the 90s will have similar conditions for the mountains, but triple digits remain for the deserts. Thank you, Brooke. Excitement is growing right here in the East Village. We're taking a live look for you now at Petco Park, which will be rocking for the playoffs this week. We're going to find out.
town to take on the Padres, either the New York Mets or the Atlanta Braves. The best of three wildcard series starts tomorrow. First pitch is at 538. More coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.